Whose who's idea, who's crazy idea was this to build gig bags or cases? Well, it started with base bags in 1998. And then when we got together, I demanded that we start making trumpet bags. And we went through several iterations until we, we found a really good looking bag that fit everything really well and then adapted that to hold different horns because as you know, trumpet players all think they know exactly the best bag and the best configuration. And mm -hmm. so that's why we have, I think five or six trumpet bag models and mm -hmm. more to come. Mm -hmm. Well, and all the custom work too, right? People like me yes. asking for Herald trumpet cases, right? Right. So David, how did you even know how to do this? Uh, I actually inadvertently took a sewing class when I was a senior in high school. Because that's, I had friends, girls, hanging out in senior <laughs> sewing, and I had a free period, and so I, I just hung around, and they eventually got tired of me not doing anything, so they bought me material to make a vest, and so I, I learned how to sew, and then what ended up being 18 years later, I think, uh, I, a friend who has a base shop was looking for somebody to make bags and I thought I'd give it a try and and it's it's something that I've always enjoyed which is making things mm -hmm. and so it it seemed reasonable and and that's uh, that's how we got started and then uh, but I as Erica said I only made well I made some things but really I made base bags in mm -hmm. one color I mean we had one color for almost 14 years and Let the funny guess. thing is, when we got together, I said, well, we need, he he had two or three colors. And then I said, well, we should get a lot of colors. And he said, well, no one's going to want that, which is hilarious now, given right. that that's the main draw is that you can, well, besides the, the, the custom aspect and, and the sizing, but the, the, that you can make it your own. It can be exactly what you want. Right. And about five or six years ago, we got the embroidery machine and now people can have their names on it. Mm -hmm. and or logos and so your imagination is is your limit mm -hmm. so yeah i'm thinking that original color let me guess it was black right actually it wasn't it was oh. a dark navy oh. um, and because i was trying to not be black i was trying to have anything but black because that's what everybody had right so it was dark navy and then i think the second color was actually burgundy Mm -hmm. Black was third, I think, but it, it's still the least popular color. Mm -hmm. And then actually orange, I think orange was next. And then, it, and then as Erica said, it just blew up and now there are 22. So yeah, I couldn't yeah. believe the choices I had, you know, to, yeah. to pick from when I, when I asked for those uh, Herald cases. Uh, and then of course, you know, my first big surprise was when uh, Eric and I, Erica and I finally got a chance to play together and she hands me this burgundy eight-piece mouthpiece pouch. <laughs> yeah. like, I'd forgotten all about it, you know? <laughs> and I'm looking at this, and, and of course, you know, it's a, it's a great source of conversation now. And everybody's like, you know, should have just made a bandolier, right? It's all yes, right. Point, you know? But, uh, yes. uh, yeah, so, you know, high-quality products, obviously, and word of mouth to get things going in the beginning, right? I mean, it just was one one case and one share at a time right to to build the business oh yeah it it uh it was purely the idea that i made the bag that i wanted to carry because i am a you know a, a working musician and i just hoped that other people would like it and in general it has gone uh that direction so it's uh it's the easiest way to do it is you let people see it, you let people touch it, and uh, it it kind of sells itself. Yeah. Um, well, and the colors help. The embroidery is a huge, uh, you know, who else offers that? You know, unless it's, unless, it's true. Unless it's hard get... because if you, if you you have the Asian con companies that want to make a thousand of something, not one. And so our niche is the fact that we'll make you one of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, unless you do an applique and then just stitch those to every case. But 
um, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of nice touches on this. Um, what, what kind of volume are you doing these days? Or can you share that information? Do you, do you want the IRS to know this information? Uh, <laughs> having, having spent this morning looking over the draft of our taxes, uh, we, it, it's always been a thing that I don't track how many bags, but it, it, it well, before the pandemic, we were probably doing it probably averaging two trumpet bags a week. Yeah. And so total bags, probably five or six bags uh, mm-hmm. or so a week. Total, total kinds of yeah. bags, yeah. But in the Christmas season, as it's the last several years, the Christmas season has turned into uh, a very, where we're working seven days a week when you're not playing Christmas mm-hmm. concerts. Right. And that has, that has turned into a very busy season for us. So that gets pushed up to about eight or nine just mm-hmm. simply because of the demand and then right before school starts everybody gets their going back to school gig bag gifts yeah. from their parents mm-hmm. which is great yeah and it's just yeah, the two right? in, uh, no we actually have one full-time employee mm-hmm. uh, a friend of ours who's a clarinet player so which it's really that we're all musicians uh, and so she has been stitching for us for, I think it's about five years now Mm -hmm. and was part-time to start. And then it slowly started in increasing hours. And, Mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's actually a really fun way to make a living. If it's, it's nice because we like what we do and we like who we work with. And, Mm -hmm. and so it's the, we feel very fortunate. Yeah. Well, I can agree, you know, when you can get to, to live your life and do what you do what you do and actually make money at it, right? That's, that's yeah. a nice combination, right? It <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm thinking, uh, I was thrilled to see that, uh, that you and Chris Hasselbring were able to uh, finally come up with some stuff. I, I, when I saw that email and the pictures of what you guys came up with, I thought, that's awesome because you saw the bags he was using right yes i mean they couldn't even call it a bag well i shouldn't say that right <laughs> but it wasn't and i told him that i said you need better cases so i'm i was thrilled uh, to see that that you guys worked on that but um, yes thank you so much that's that's been a really great collaboration and i love the horns actually the first bag that we sent him we exchanged we traded so I have, uh, I have one of the horns now. He, he listens to my ramblings all day. So, you know, when, when trumpet players to get together, the first question is what size mouthpiece? With, with bass players, is it, you know, uh, how do you tune your G string or, I mean, what do you? No, it, it's, it's more about, uh, do you have a beer on hand? And if so, what time? <laughs> right, right. I mean, we talk gear some, but Right. It's just, we just don't have the variables. I, I don't think, uh, well, that, that cause they can't have. afford to have, you know, 20 Trump or 20 bases. Yeah. 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 yeah pretty much have one base, one bow, and you might change strings occasionally, but they're hundreds of dollars and a, and a, an arduous task to change. Yeah. So we don't, we don't do too much of that. So, yeah. It's, oh. it's, uh, I, and I, I get it. The, the number of things that you guys have to do, well, let's just talk transposition. So, um, I, I get the whole, what is the repertoire? What am I going to use? You know, David plays tuba as well. And we have a little oh, okay. Dixie land band and, uh, he no had a way. B flat. Yes, we do. Um, and so he had a B flat tuba for a while, but I got him a C tuba because it's just a nicer horn, and uh, it was really entertaining. Someone who had okay. never had to, you know, right. do anything in their brain for notes. <laughs> so yeah, now I'm the five one mafia, thinking really hard. <laughs> as far as scaling, are you guys looking to grow? Are you looking to expand? Not really. Uh, we've actually the last. Actually, it was last summer. We had very serious conversations about, uh, for example, what if you had $100,000 at your disposal? What could you do? 
And as far as infrastructure goes, yes, there are opportunities, but the, the heart of the business is the people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the people that do the stitching. And when you call, I answer the phone, Erica answers the phone, and you're talking to the people who are doing the work. Mm -hmm. So between myself, Erica, and Samantha, that it's a, it's a skill that you can almost say that nobody has mm -hmm. because of how few people so compared to how they did when, well, even my mother's generation where mm -hmm. everybody sewed. Mm -hmm. And so it has a specific type of sewing. We don't make clothing uh, and, and we're envious of people that do, but we make bags, which are its own little, its own little world of techniques and, and production processes. So mm -hmm. the harder thing is finding the right person to be able to expand mm -hmm. more than it is finding a building or buying machines mm -hmm. to expand. So mm -hmm. keeping the quality as high as we can by it always passing through our hands is I think what we're gonna just keep doing. <laughs> Busier. I think it would be easier to answer that question if we were so busy we were barely hanging on getting everything done mm -hmm. um, so because I, there's like there's kind of a jump there's this this kind of no man's land you know we're down here with how much we have but it's such a jump to make it to where you have another building and you can make that work financially but yeah how many more bags do you need to make a week to cover the cost of the new building slash equipment and people because we certainly can't fit anything else in this little house <laughs> we we have a small house with a small shop but you, you we make it work yeah you couldn't custom sew an extra room on, right <laughs> yeah, well if if we could that'd be awesome because that's yeah, in our right? skill set but <laughs> yeah for all the the hard work and and providing a great podcast thanks what's well, a lot of fun it's a lot of fun. So, all right. Good to see you guys. Have a good one. I see you. Talk Have you a soon. good one, Larry. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.